Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from Learn Hub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at learnohub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICC class 10 physics chapter 9 household circuit. We'll be discussing about the transmission of power and house wiring. Hope you all are ready. Let's start. Transmission of power from generating station to consumer. We all consume electricity. Where does this electricity come from? Have you ever imagined where this electricity actually comes from? This electricity comes from power station. So here in power station, you can find a boiler, turbine and generator. Let's see what happens here. In the boiler, the water boils and vapors are produced. So this vapors helps the turbine to rotate. Okay, the coils rotate here and then here we have a generator. What is a generator? We know that a generator is a device which converts mechanical energy to electric electrical energy. In case if, do if you don't have electricity, you can use a generator to produce electricity. So here what is happening? A magnetic flux or a magnetic field is created. The armature coil rotates to produce a magnetic field or magnetic flux. In that case, what is happening? The mechanical energy due to this rotation will be having mechanical energy. This mechanical energy will get converted to gets converted into electrical energy okay now electrical energy is produced electrical there is a dc voltage produced here so here this then goes to a grid substation so here 11 kilowatt that is 11000 volts electricity is produced okay now this power this current then goes to the grid substation. So here you have a grid substation. Now what happens at the grid substation? Here we have a DC voltage. So here what we are going to do is you can step up and step down this. Okay, that is the voltage can be increased and decreased. So step up transformer is a device which is used to increase the voltage. We need to increase the voltage. Why? Because from here, from the power station, it should reach the consumer. We don't have power station nearby. Everywhere do we have power stations? No, right? From the power station, it has to travel a long distance. For that, what you have to do is you have to increase the voltage. Okay. To increase the voltage, you have a grid substation. In the grid substation, you will be having a step up transformer. Step up transformer. What does a step up transformer do? A step up transformer increases the voltage. Okay. Here we have a step up transformer. In this, we have 11 kilovolt DC voltage. So here we have to supply some 50 hertz frequency AC. Only then this conversion can happen. Okay. Now we will be getting 132 kilovolts. 132 kilovolts electricity we are getting here. Now this will then go to the main substation. Okay. Here we have a high voltage. Now you have to remember one thing. Power should be always a constant. Power is always a constant. Same power is there. Power is equal to voltage into current. We have studied this relation. We have studied different relations for power. Power is voltage into current. Here we need to, this current should travel through all these cables, right? So here we will be maintaining a high voltage and a small current. In this case, Ohm's law is not obeyed. What is Ohm's law? voltage or potential difference directly proportional to current which means the voltage increases when current increases or current increase voltage increase but in this case power is a constant power is equal to v by i which means v will be equal to p divided by i which means since power is a constant voltage and current are inversely proportional one quantity increases other quantity decreases here we, we need a small current and high voltage what is the reason high voltage we are giving okay what is the reason to maintain current to be a low what happens if current increases we have studied joule's law of heating h is equal to i square rt heating effect of electric current according to which if resistance and time are not considered it they are taken to be a constant what happens when current increases when current increases heat energy increases okay heat energy increases so here the electrical energy will be flowing plus there will be a heat energy produced heat energy this heat energy will be a loss so there is a wastage of energy in order to prevent this what we are doing we are increasing the voltage so that the current can be small small current can flow through it low current can flow through it okay so from the grid substation it now reaches a main substation so here in the main substation we will be having step down transformer step down transformer 
okay what does a step down transformer do we know that step up transformer increases the voltage okay rises the voltage now the step down transformer it will decrease the voltage okay here 132 kilovolt has traveled this much distance and reached the main substation. Now, at the main substation, it is uh, going to the step down transformer and the voltage is decreasing. It is decreasing and reaching a value 33 kilovolt, that is 33,000 volt. Now, where does this 33,000 volt or 33 kilovolt go? So, here first it goes to the Heavy industries. In a heavy industry, we will be having heavy appliances which need more voltage, more current to work. Okay, more voltage will be required for these devices to work. So, into heavy industries it goes. Also, it will be going to the intermediate substation. The remaining will go to the intermediate substation. In the intermediate substation, again, you will be having a step down transformer. Okay, here again you will be having a step down transformer. This step down transformers has decreased the voltage from 132 kilovolt voltage was changed to 33 kilovolt. Okay, now here in the step down transformer at the intermediate substation, here what happens is this 33 kilovolt which reaches here, here you can see the 33 kilovolt reaching, this 33 kilovolt will get changed to 11 kilovolt. We have started from 11 kilovolt. Okay. It has changed to 11 kilovolt. Now, why 11 kilovolt? Here I have given 11 kilovolt. What happens is when you supply high voltage or low voltage, there will be difficulties for insulation. Also, the current flow will be decreases because that is when voltage decreases uh, you know the current increases when current increases these type of heat loss may happen so we are starting from a 11 kilovolt this is a standard value okay now here this in the in, at the intermediate substation step down transformer changes the 33 kilovolt into 11 kilovolt it has changed to 11 kilovolt now this 11 kilovolt is used in smaller industries in smaller industries to run appliances this 11 kilovolt is required okay also remaining it goes to the city substation city substation it is from here we use the electricity okay here what happens is at the city substation again you will be having a step down transformer okay here you will be having a step down transformer now what does this step down transformer do here we are getting 11 kilovolt and it is getting converted into changed to reduced to 220 volt so this value we have seen in case of mixer grinder and all it will be power rating you have seen and the voltage rating it will be given 100 watt 220 volt mostly many devices you can see this 220 volt okay so 220 volt will be required to run the device now here this 220 volt is what reaches the consumers okay the consumers will be getting this 220 volt our main switchboard and all will be having this 220 volt to run the different appliances at home so this is how the transmission of power is seen from a power station generating power station how does it reach the consumer understood clear here we have a simple block diagram which helps us to understand easily how the transmission of electricity from the generating power plant to the consumer is so first what you have you have a power generating station at 11 kilovolt okay 11 kilovolt voltage is produced then it goes directly to the grid substation step up to 132 kilovolt here what is happening there will be a step up transformer which increases the voltage to 130 kilovolt and you have studied what is the reason to increase this voltage okay next it goes from the grid substation to the main substation main substation now from here on you will be having step down transformer at each stage you will be having step down transformer so at the main substation you have a step down transformer which reduces the voltage from 132 kilovolt to 33 kilovolt now what is happening 33 kilovolt it then goes to the intermediate substation also it also goes to the heavy industries okay heavy industries also use this 33 kilovolt when it reaches the intermediate substation, again step down, changing from 33 kilovolt to 11 kilovolt. It also goes to the smaller industry, light industries. Okay, small industries. Okay, now from the intermediate substation, it goes to the city substation. Here, the change is from 33 kilovolt to 11 kilovolt, and here it is 11 kilovolt to 220 volt. This is a change happening from here straight to the 
consumers that is v we get the electricity that we are using so this is a block diagram you can easily study this block diagram and explain it in detail so which are the three different types of wires used in electric circuit we know that from the city substation from the city substation the current should reach our house right so for this cables and wires are required either you will be using the overhead cables you have seen overhead cables poles to pole connection so overhead cables can be used or underground wires can be used okay so here three types of wires you have one is green in color the second is red in color and the third is black in color okay what each stands for this is called earth wire the black one is a neutral wire and the red one is a live wire okay this live wire is also called face wire here at the local substation earth wire and the neutral wire these two will be connected together to maintain a potential of zero volt okay and this red wire red wire will be maintained mainly at 220 volt potential so here through the red wire the current flows okay current flow happens through the red wire here from the source the current should reach each device okay the from the source to the distribution box we'll be studying about this to the distribution box the current flows through the live wire and this neutral wire is for the return journey again from this devices from different devices the current should flow back to the source for that for the return path you will be having the neutral wire and about earth wire and earthing we will be discussing in detail this is mainly the excess current can be sent to the ground for that purpose is earth wire for safety purpose safety purpose earth wires are being used clear now how do we use this electricity from the city substation it should reach our house let's see how this is happening from the city substation here you can see three wires we have discussed about the wires live wire neutral wire and earth wire we have said through the live wire the current flows from the source to different appliances and through neutral wire it comes back from the appliances to the source so here you have been seeing three wires okay sometimes when you check the cables the cable lines you have seen you will be seeing black color lines so inside this black color line you will be having these wires okay sometimes you can find five wires sometimes it may be three wires through underground cables or the overhead wires you can see five cables at some time so these five wires will be neutral earth and the three other wires will be live wire three live wires one neutral wire and earth wire if it is three wires total then one live one neutral and one earth so this is called three phase okay three phase and this is single phase system okay this is single phase so here what is happening you can see these wires are passing through an electric port this is your electric port okay now here you can see a company fuse this is called a company fuse which is connected to this live wire why is this company fuse connected let's see so here this company fuse it will be of a high rating some 50 ampere okay 50 ampere rating company fuse is connected to the live wire what does this company fuse do if there is any fault if more current is start to flow what happens is at this point the fuse melt the fuse wire will melt and it doesn't allow the current to flow to the remaining part and all this part will be safe okay for the safety purpose we'll be using this company fuse clear and remember uh, company fuse if the power is some 10 kilowatt or the load is 10 kilowatt load you can use this uh, 50 ampere rating current rating company fuse okay and remember one more point this company fuse it can be only handled by electric supply company a, a person from electric supply company only can handle this okay from here you can see the live wire is going to a kilowatt hour meter you have seen this kilowatt hour meter everybody would have seen at your home you can see this okay where the current the electrical energy consumed will be shown in kilowatt hours okay this is usually attached to the wall okay so in this kilowatt hour meter the rating will be given okay now here after this the same li live wire you can see it is passing to the main switch okay now what is the main switch when you discussed about discuss when we, we are going to discuss about switches you will be discussing about single switch single pole switch and the double pole switch so here the main switch is a double pole switch it is a double pole switch 
So here actually what is happening, you will see. Now you will be having a holder, okay. When you pull it up, it will be in the on state. That is, you can on all the devices, all the appliances here, okay. And when you close it, here what happens is all the color current will be dis getting disconnected and all the appliance will start to, it, it will stop to work. So this is what the main switch does. So here, so here an ELCB will be connected. ELCB is earth leakage circuit breaker. So here what does ELCB does? Let's see. It will be handling, that is it can disconnect both the live wire and the neutral wire. And this ELCB is for the safety purpose. That what the function of a fuse is, you know, a function of fuse is to, is the safety of other devices. Okay, the fuse wire mains and other devices will be safe. Same is happening in case of ELCB. ELCB will be connected to the main switch. Okay, after that, it is going to the distribution box from where it can reach the different appliances. So for each device, there will be different fuse. And this fuse is called MCB. Okay, here the fuse is MCB. MCB stands for Miniature Circuit Breaker. Okay, now here this main switch, it will have an iron coating and this terminal of the iron coating it will be earth it will be connected to the earth so this is earthing earthing is also done for the safety of the device okay so after main switch you are having the miniature circuit breaker this is the distribution box here to all the appliances the current can be supplied okay the live wire you can see the live wire this blue is the live wire live wire will be reaching here you have a fuse Okay, again, before the appliance is connected, you will be having a fuse. This fuse is a MCB in this case. So here, separate fuse is there and the se separate fuse is MCB. For the next device or the next room, you will be having another live wire. This part of the live wire, here you have the fuse. Here again, you will be having. So all these will be earth. You can see everything is earth and earthing is done for the safety of all the devices. Clear? So this is how the power is distributed to different parts of a house. House wiring, there are two types this can be done. One is the tree system and the second is ring system. We'll be discussing about the ring system here. So you can see this figure. Okay, Here you have a distribution box. This is your distribution box. Okay, from the distribution box to different appliances, you will be having a ring system. Okay. Here you can see the current. Current passes through the live wire. Okay, here you will be having an MCB main fuse. Okay, main fuse MCB, which is of a 30 ampere. Okay, 30 ampere current rating MCB will be there. Okay, to protect the device. Now the current that reaches this point through the live, you can see the live wire, neutral wire, and earth wire. Okay, here you will be having a ring system. Consider this is your room. Inside a room, you will be having different appliances. You will be having a bulb. Okay, let's say a bulb. Then you have a fan. You have an AC. What else? You have different other devices. Okay, other appliances are there. Let's consider these three. Okay. Now what happens is electricity should flow through all these devices for them to work. Okay. Now there will be separate connection. Here the live wire you can see. It will start from here reaching this point. It is now given in the form of a ring. Okay. In the form of a ring it will be given. Here the current will be flowing through both these direction. Okay, both these path current will be splitting and flowing. Okay, when it reaches here, when it reaches here, it will join again and flow on to the other appliances. Now you have you can see a lamp, then you are having a fan and the other appliances which are connected to it. How they are connected? You can see separately the neutral wire and the live wire. So when you take the case of a lamp, a lamp you just need a two pin socket, okay. That is here earthing is not necessary because it is consuming very low current, okay. When it comes to the case of fan, here again a two pin socket is enough because it is also consuming very low current. So earthing is not necessary. But when you take other appliances, for example, if you have an AC, okay. When you take the case of an AC, you need all the three, live wire, earth wire and the neutral wire okay live wire why is live wire used from the source it should reach the appliance the current should reach the appliance for the reverse path the return path from the appliance to the source you need a neutral wire and why is the earth wire earth wire is for the earthing purpose that is for the safety of the device 
okay so here you can see the live wire from here to the lab you can see a fuse and this is your switch separate switch and fuse will be there why is fuse used if excess current flows the device will get damaged so at this purpose of at this point the fuse will melt and the device is safe okay and you have a separate switch for this lamp clear now this part of this terminal of the lamp is then connected to the neutral so here you have the neutral this is your neutral okay from here the starting of neutral again it is forming a ring so here the crossing you will be showing like this two wires crossing each other you will show like this that is they are not going to inter intersect okay you have to show this bent this is how the neutral goes then you have the earth wire in the case of lamp is a are you using the earth wire no right why because earth wire is not required because very low current this device can function okay again when you take the case of fan fan when you take you have the live wire so here this is your live wire through the fuse you have a switch and this is a device okay then you have the neutral wire for the reverse path you have the neutral wire this is the path of the neutral wire the current will reach from the appliance the fan to the source okay what about earth wire earth wire connection is not going to this why because it is not necessary okay. when you take the case of ac other appliances of high rating in that cases what is needed if you have a washing machine again or you have a refrigerator you have a tv all these cases you can see a three pin okay three pin sockets you can see three three plugs will be there okay in that case you have all the three wires that is live wire neutral wire and earth wire they will be connected clear so here you have the socket to the socket you can connect everything if it is a three pin socket if you have a three pin socket you can connect these devices like washing machine ac refrigerators etc if it is a two pin socket you can connect lamp then bulb you can then connect this fan for all these purposes you will be using a two pin socket clear okay for the socket again you will be having a separate fuse and a switch okay now you have to remember for each device the current required is different therefore you will have to use wires of proper current carrying capacity only then they will be working clear this is what the ring system is you just remember this point it is in the form of ring that is a live wire the neutral wire and earth wire is kept in the form of a ring therefore this is called a ring system okay we have studied about ring system what are the advantages of ring system let's see here in the ring system the current from the mains can reach to an appliance through two separate paths thus each appliance gets connected to the mains effectively through a thick wire you can see in case of this connection here we have the appliance and this is the main fuse okay now here you can see that the current if this is a live wire through the live wire it is going through two different paths the current that is reaching here is going through two different paths okay so these wires will be of a low current carrying capacity and is more efficient and at this point what happened they will be joined to the together and they will reach each appliance two different appliances it can reach now here if you need 5 ampere of current what happens the 5 ampere current that comes from here what happens to this it splits into 2.5 ampere flows through here and 2.5 ampere flows through here okay again they get reunited and it reaches a appliance so you can use that is the thick wires if you are using the direct connection from the main connection that is from main to this appliance if there is a direct connection you will be you cannot use a wire which is of low current carrying capacity but here you can use a wire of low current carrying capacity okay and thick wires are there at both the ends understood so this is your first advantage second advantage is each appliance has a separate fuse therefore if due to some fault the fuse of one appliance burns it does not affect the operation of other appliance so fuse is nothing but a safety device we'll be explaining about fuse in detail later so fuse is nothing it is a simple safety device to protect protect the device also to protect us from short short circuiting and all. so this is a safety device okay here what happens is now in different devices you have a lamp then you have a fan uh, you have some other appliances so here in each case you will be having a fuse okay you can see the fuse in each case okay here this fuse is connected as i said for the safety of the device the device should not get damaged 
okay the live wire to each live wire this fuse will be connected now what happens is if excess current flows through this fuse through the to the device what happens is the fuse there will be a fuse wire inside the fuse so this fuse wire will break okay we call fusing or it is the blowing of fuse blowing of a fuse okay now what happens is current will not be allowed to flow and the device to the device this excess current will not reach okay so this fuse is for the lamp okay even if this fuse melts here if this fuse melts and connection is break the lamp will not work but still the fan is able to work okay for so so the, since the fuse is provided for different devices the working of one device or the not working of other device will not affect the other one okay if one device works or not works if the fuse melt in one case the other device working is not going to be interrupted so each device will be having separate fuse okay you can see separate fuse for each device clear now the third advantage in the system all the plugs and sockets used can be of same size but each socket should have its own fuse of rating suitable for the appliances to be connected with it so here you have a three pin socket in the three pin socket you can connect washing machine a plug of washing machine then the plug of ac plug of television everything can be connected to the three pin socket you cannot connect the fan or lamp but all these can be connected to a three pin socket now here each of these sockets should have a separate fuse and you have to remember the fuse that you are using in these cases should be of proper rating okay proper current rating it should have so that only then these devices will be safe or the socket will be safe clear so this is the third advantage now the fourth advantage while installing a new appliance in a room a new line up to the distribution box is not required but can be directly connected to the ring circuit in that room if you have to install a new device in the room in that case in the ring circuit only you can take connections and it can be connected okay the point that to be remembered is for this device there will be a total current that it draws to work okay for that device to work there should be some current the total current that is drawn from the main should always be less than the current rating of the fuse let's say 30 ampere is the current rating of fuse that also what is current rating will be studied in detail so this current rating value okay this value should not exceed this value the total current that is drawn for its working should not exceed this value only that you have to keep in mind how are the device connected you have different appliances okay always remember these appliances will be connected in parallel and why parallel what are the advantages of connecting devices in parallel here you can see i have taken three bulbs these bulbs are connected in series okay in this diagram you have seen that the three bulbs are connected in parallel to the battery okay you have different devices for example you have a bulb you have a lamp you have a fan okay so these devices can be connected in similar way you can connect it in series or you can connect it in parallel now when they are connected in parallel how is the connection so here you will be having the source okay this is a source voltage so this is a parallel connection this is how parallel connection looks like you know this okay so this is parallel connection now in parallel connection what is the importance of parallel connection in parallel connection we have studied in the case of resistor the voltage will be same potential difference will be same and the current will be different so the advantages are each appliance gets connected to 220 volt supply which is equal to the voltage rating or its normal working for the normal working you have to have a voltage rating of 220 volt okay so here you can see this is a parallel connection okay in the case of bulb when you take you have a battery Okay, here you are not using the switch or any other source simple battery is a simple cell is used so here what is happening each bulb will be getting a current will they be equal or different in the series connection we know that in the opposite direction of charge flow there is current flow okay here we have current flow the current which reaches this point what happens it flows through this bulb the same current flows through this bulb the same current flows through this bulb but in parallel connection what is happening the current which reaches this point from here what happens it splits okay it moves to different devices same thing is happening in this case also here you have a source from this source the current flows through different devices okay depending upon their voltage rating so each device will be having different voltage rating okay depending on their voltage rating how much current is required that much of current will flow through each devices okay so this is the first 
advantage. Okay, now the second advantage is each appliance operate independently without being affected by the presence or working of the other appliance. You can see that in series connection, what happens suddenly if this bulb does not glow, okay, it stopped working. Can current flow through it again? No, right? This bulb, if it doesn't glow, then what happens? All these will stop glowing. Okay, but when it comes to parallel connection, you can see the current flowing through here. Okay, if this stops working, still current can flow through both these and these two will be glowing even though this is not glowing. Okay, so here the working of other appliance is not affected if one appliance stops working. Okay, same in case if you have three different devices, you have a bulb, you have a lamp, if you have a fan. Okay, if the even if the bulb stop working, still the lamp and fan will be working because the current reaching them will be different. Okay, if even if current cannot flow through this bulb, since bulb is damaged, current is able to flow through the lamp and the fan. Okay, so these are the two important advantages of connecting the devices or appliances in parallel. Clear? Next, the disadvantages of connecting the devices in series. If the devices are connected in series, what are the disadvantages? For example, let's take. For example, let's take devices. You have a fan. Then you have a bulb. And then you have a lamp. Okay. These devices are connected in series. A chain type connection to the voltage source. Okay. In series connection, points to remember, we know that the current flowing will be same. Current flowing through each device is going to same. What about the voltage? Voltage is going to be divided. Okay. Here, the total voltage V will be equal to voltage for fan, the voltage bulb and voltage of the lamp. This is how you can write the voltage is getting split. Okay. And we have the Ohm's law. According to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. Each device will be having a resistance. Okay, so this voltage V can be written as Vf will be, current will be same, Rf plus current will be same, Rb, resistance of the bulb plus current into resistance of the lamp. So this is how the relation will be. Now what are the disadvantages? The first point is the voltage of the source gets divided in all the appliances connected in series in ratio of their resistance. So depending on the resistance, depending on the resistance, okay, these resistance values are different, okay. So each appliance does not operate at the rated voltage. So let's say if 220 volt is the rated voltage of each device, the voltage that is reaching them will be different, that will be lower than this 220 volt. If you have a 220 volt source and the voltage is being split in each case, then what happens? They won't be getting this 220 volt. And if these devices are rated at 220 volt, they won't be able to work. So this is the first disadvantage. Second disadvantage is on connecting one more appliance in the same circuit. The resistance of the circuit will increase, hence it will reduce the current in the circuit so each appliance will get less power. Here you are connecting one more device, let's say a new device is connected. Now what happens to the resistance value? In series connection we know that the effective resistance RS will increase, okay, RS value will increase when one more device is connected. When the resistance value increases, we have the relation V is equal to IR. Okay, and current will be is equal to V by R. The total current we are saying, the total current will be equal to V by R. Here, since the resistance value is increasing, what happens to the current? Current value will decrease. So the current flowing, the same amount of current, we know the same amount of current is flowing through each device. The value of this current is going to be decreased when a new device is connected. When the value of current decreases, we have a relation for power. Power P is equal to VI is equal to I square R equal to V square divided by R. Here we have a fixed resistance value, the effective resistance. When the current value decreases, what happens to power? The power is also going to decrease, which means the bulb will be glowing with a very low power. So power value will decrease. So this is your second disadvantage. And the third one, all appliances connected in series operate simultaneously. None of the appliance can be operated independently. If one appliance is switched off or not operated, no other appliance connected with it in the series will then operate. This also we have studied in the previous when we discussed about the parallel connection. So here what is happening? If these connections are taken, okay, we know that 
करंट इज फ्लोइंग द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ करंट इज फ्लोइंग थ्रू ईच डिवाइस कि इनिशियली द फैन स्टॉप वर्किंग फैन डज नॉट अलाउ करंट टू फ्लो थ्रू इट ना वॉट हैपन देन देर विल बी नो डिवाइस इज गोइंग टू वर्क ओके any of these device won't work is not going to work if any of the device stops working all other device will also be interrupted they won't be allowed to work but this is not the case of parallel connection why because in parallel connection different current is flowing here but the same current is flowing therefore the interruption of one device will not allow other devices to work so these are the disadvantages why these are the reasons why you won't be connecting the devices in series and the connection is always in parallel clear Let us take an example. The diagram in figure shows a battery, a switch, and two bulbs. Complete the diagram to show the electric connections of the bulbs to the battery. Here you can see two bulbs, a switch, and a battery. Let's see how to connect this. Okay. Now first step is you have to connect these bulbs in parallel. Okay. So from first bulb, take a connection to this bulb. So this is how parallel connection is done. Okay. Now what you have to do is from one end of this you will have to connect to the switch. okay from the switch to positive terminal of battery then from the negative terminal of battery to the other end of the bulb okay here we have parallel connection you know what parallel connection is from this parallel connection from one end you will go to the switch and from the other end to the negative terminal of battery this is how the connection is done clear now the second part of question how have you joined the bulbs in part a what type of connection we have made series or parallel parallel connection right so we are doing parallel connection okay what are the reasons why only if parallel connection is done the voltage across each bulb will be same okay first reason is this one second is if they were connected in series what happens in series connection we know that the current flowing will be same but the voltage will be different when the current flowing is same what happens if one bulb ceases or one bulb does not glow what happens to the other bulb the other bulb will also not glow okay so if they are connected in series if one stops glowing the other will also stop glowing but if they are connected in parallel the glowing of one bulb does not depend on the glowing of other bulb okay clear second example an electric bulb rated 220 volt 60 volt glows when connected with 220 volt mains find the resistance of the filament of the bulb we have to find the resistance how to find resistance we have a relation power p is equal to v square divided by r from which r will be equal to v square divided by p okay here what is v v is given 220 volt voltage rating is 220 220 square divided by power power is given 60 volt 60 okay 220 into 220 Divided by sixty. When you calculate this, you will be getting eight hundred and six point six seven ohms. Okay, eight hundred and six point six seven ohms. Next, the second part of the question. Another identical bulb is connected in series with the first one, and the system is connected across the two twenty volt mains. Draw a diagram to show the arrangement and find the rate of consumption of energy. What is rate of consumption of energy? It is nothing but the power itself in each bulb and the total power consumed. So, how to connect in series? Here you have the first bulb. Okay, this is your first bulb. This bulb is represented, and then you have the second bulb. Okay, now they are connected to the mains, two twenty volt mains. So this is the series arrangement. This is bulb one and bulb two. Okay, we have to find the rate of consumption of energy. We have to find the power. How to find power in this case? What is the relation? What are the non quantities? Here, what happens to the voltage in case of series connection? we know that in series connection voltage will be different k okay, voltage splits so here the first bulb to the first bulb there will be 110 volt and the second bulb also 110 volt okay and the resistance of each bulb we know what is the resistance value resistance value is 806.67 it is given identical bulb okay identical bulb therefore the resistance value will be same and the voltage across each will be the same which is split from 220 volt okay so for bulb 1 when you take the case of bulb 1 how to find we have to find the power for bulb 1 power is equal to which relation to take here we know the resistance value and the voltage which mean v square divided by r 110 square 
divided by R value. R value in this case is 806.67. When you calculate this, you will be getting 15 watt. So for, for bulb 1, it is 15 watt and for bulb 2, the same values, 110 and 806.67. Therefore, for B2 also, the power P2 will be equal to 15 watts. Okay. Now the total power consumed. How to find total power? You have to just add. So the total power will be equal to total power will be equal to 15 watt plus 15 watt that is equal to 30 watt. Okay, 30 watts. Next. If two bulbs are connected in parallel, draw a diagram of this arrangement. What will then be the total power consumed? Here, what is the total power consumed? In this case, you are having the two bulbs which are connected in parallel. So, this is your first bulb and this is your second bulb. Then they are connected to the mains. Okay. Now, in this case, what will be the total power consumed? Bulb 1, bulb 2 total power P is equal to. In this case, the power, power will be the same which is 60 watt. Okay, 60 watt for bulb 1 and 60 watt for bulb 2 which is 120 watts. So, 120 watts is the total power in this case for parallel connection. Clear? That's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed the transmission of electric current from the power generating station to the consumers. We have discussed this in detail. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai, par best hai. Thank you.